If you want to double or triple the size of your garden next year, let's collect some milkweed seeds. You want to collect milkweed seeds because then you get free milkweed plants. Everybody wants free plants. You can get hundreds of plants for free if you learn how to collect milkweed seeds at the right time. That's how you double the size of your garden for free. Let's get it. So today we're gonna to specifically be talking about what kinds of milkweed I recommend for the home garden, where to plant your milkweed seeds, how to tell if your milkweed is ready to harvest, and how to gather the seed without making a huge mess. The milkweed provides the leaves for our hungry caterpillars. Everybody read that book as a kid, right? Monarch caterpillars can only eat milkweed leaves, so that's what we're gonna grow. Milkweed is a native plant, so it wants to grow where it is native, which is mostly North and South America. There are about a hundred different species of milkweed, and not all of them are native to where you are. You want to get a milkweed that's native to your area because it's going to thrive in its home soil. I have two different types of milkweed in my garden in Northern Illinois. The orange one is Asclepius tuberosa, butterfly weed, and the pink one is Asclepius incarnata also known as swamp milkweed. We're also gonna talk about a third kind of milkweed and why I don't have it in my garden. But first, I wanna say that all the milkweed plants will scatter their seeds all around the garden. That means that if you have a milkweed plant, you're probably going to get what we call volunteers, new plants that have just sprung up from seed that have naturally seeded around in your garden. This means you will probably get free milkweed plants every single year without even trying. They show up in random places. I even saw some in my neighbor's side yard and I did not plant it there. It just blew over on the wind. What if you don't want to rely on chance and you want to plant them somewhere specific in your garden? Or maybe you want to give them away to a friend or neighbor. First things first. For the species I'm talking about, you want a full sun location. These plants will tolerate part shade, but they might not flower as much. Or they may get kind of tall and what we call leggy, which just means that the plant gets kind of tall and spindly. This can be totally fine if you're growing them for monarch caterpillars only. The caterpillars eat the leaves, so they can still benefit from a plant that isn't flowering. But in general, these plants thrive in full sun. Butterfly weed. If you're looking for something that fits easily, into a home garden setting, something short and not aggressive. At the nursery, I look for the label Asclepius tuberosa, butterfly milkweed, or butterfly weed. You don't want to confuse this with butterfly bush, which is a non-native exotic plant that does not host monarch butterfly caterpillars. I wouldn't want you to be disappointed if you're hoping to have caterpillars visiting. Butterfly milkweed is two to three feet tall depending on the plant and the location. They're basically like a little shrub that blooms bright orange in July and has these really cool looking seed pods in September. Just like other perennials, the foliage dies back every year. All the above ground parts of the plant grow back completely in the spring. I get tons of pollinators on my butterfly milkweed and lots of monarch caterpillars. This plant needs full sun and medium to dry conditions. So this isn't a plant that you want to put at the bottom of your rain garden where it's going to get standing water. You want to put it on the outside part, the high part of the rain garden. One of the great things about this plant is its drought tolerance. Look at the leaves. They're small and have a waxy coating. Some leaves are even kind of fuzzy, especially early in the season. Fuzzy leaves, waxy coating. This is what makes them sun and drought tolerant. I never have to water this and it almost never gets tall enough to flop over. Those bright orange flowers are really something else too. You can see them a mile away. It's just awesome. Asclepius incarnata swamp milkweed. This is my favorite. It's a great rain garden plant. It has gorgeous color, smells like vanilla cookies. This one is taller, about four feet, and the pink blooms attract monarch butterflies like crazy. They come early in the season to lay their eggs, and they stick around to get nectar from the flowers. On my property, I see the most butterflies on my swamp milkweed. The caterpillars love them, and it's not just for the butterflies. All kinds of bees visit the swamp milkweed. Then when the flowers are gone, I still see monarch caterpillars on the swamp milkweed, well into September. 
It's called swamp milkweed because you usually see it in wet areas, but it doesn't require wet soil. It does perfectly fine in medium soil. Not too wet, not too dry. Then why do we see it on the edges of ponds and rivers? That's because it outcompetes the other plants that can't handle that low oxygen environment of having their roots wet all the time. So it outcompetes them on the riverbank. The roots of this plant are fibrous. They'll hold the soil together, preventing erosion. It's really a workhorse in the rain garden, soaking up water, helping the water soak into the soil, prevents erosion, filters the water, flowers for beauty, nectar for pollinators, and it hosts so many caterpillars. I mean, it's just, there are too many good things about this plant. You've got to try it. Don't miss out. If you have a sunny spot in your garden, plant some swamp milkweed and see for yourself. Common milkweed. Okay, common milkweed is great for natural areas or restorations where there's going to be a lot of other competition from other tall plants. This plant is tall. It's about four to six feet. If it doesn't have any competition, it will grow in like a big patch of just common milkweed. This might be perfect if you have acreage or a large area dedicated to restoring prairie plants. I love common milkweed because it's strong. It can really hold its own against invasives sometimes. The flowers are huge. They have a wonderful smell. And some say this is the preferred plant for monarch butterflies. So what you've noticed me saying about common milkweed is that it's great for large areas and restorations. I don't usually recommend it for the home garden because it's tall and it's kind of hard to control. It's not unusual to have one the first year, three the next year, and then 12 the year after that. It can be hard to control unless you have a very dense meadow or prairie style home garden, which some people do, and that's awesome. I love that. Um, it's just up to you and your family's needs. With all the praise and excitement about milkweed, I do wanna make sure you're informed that milkweed is not good for livestock to eat. The milky sap is toxic and can make animals sick if they eat enough of it. The good thing is it supposedly tastes really bad. That is by design to protect itself, so animals usually leave this alone. But it's important that you have that information. You'll want to wear gloves and wash your hands after handling. This is because milkweed has a chemical in it that can be harmful if it gets in your eyes specifically. So always wear gloves when handling milkweed seeds. So, okay, how do we get more of these plants? There's more than one way to do anything. So I respect the different ways that people have to gather seed. So I'm just gonna show you what works for me in my yard. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you have a different way of doing this, especially if it's easier. I will totally switch to a different way if I find one that works better. Professional nurseries have all kinds of tools to sift through massive quantities, but I'm a home gardener, so we're gonna do this low tech how to collect the seed. In August, your milkweed is going to start forming these little seed pods. They look pretty cool and start out a green color and then turn yellow or brown when they're ripe. How do I know when they're ripe? The seed pods will turn brown and dry up a bit. You can check for ripeness by pressing on the seam of the seed pod with one finger. Just take one thumb and press on the seam and if it opens up readily, it's ready to open. If you push against it and nothing happens, it still needs more time. You can, of course, use both hands and force open the seed pot. There you'll see white, pale, unripe seeds. It's possible some of these will be viable, but I don't think it's a good idea. If I'm gonna take the time to do this, I wanna give myself the best chance at success. Fluffy stuff. Milkweed is a genius plant and it has this fluff attached to every single seed. The fluff is so lightweight and it has such air resistance that it literally floats away on the wind. It's almost impervious to gravity. It can probably float for miles and miles. This is great for the plant, but it's a pain in the ass when you're trying to collect seeds. You can just stuff it in a jar with the fluff attached, but when you open, the seeds are gonna immediately come out and float around everywhere. Do this outside for the love of God. <laughs> I prefer to remove the fluff all in one go or pull the seeds off while holding on to the fluff. Do this outside. <laughs> Just don't, don't try to do this inside. You're gonna make a freaking mess. You're gonna have fluffy milkweed seeds floating all through air vents and all that stuff. It's gonna be everywhere and it's gonna be there for a long time. How to store seeds. As soon as you collect it, immediately label your seeds. 
don't think you're going to remember. Label them, especially if you're going to be giving seed away to friends. There's nothing more frustrating than getting a plant or getting seed and then finding out a year later it isn't the plant they thought it was. That's a real bummer. Don't be that friend. I store my seeds in a jar in the refrigerator until I'm ready to sow them or give them away. Storing the seed in the fridge is not the same as stratification. Stratifying seeds in the fridge means mixing the seeds in with moist perlite or sand or peat moss and keeping them in the fridge for a specific period of time to induce germination. I'll make a different video with the details of how to stratify seeds. Here's some problems you might encounter when collecting milkweed seeds. Milkweed bugs. These are some pretty good looking orange bugs that feed on the seed pods. They cause the seed pod to open prematurely you'll see some undeveloped seeds in the pod. I have in the past put organza bags around the seed pods in order to prevent the milkweed bugs from getting all of my seed. That's worked for me to some extent. Although some of the bugs do find their way inside, especially the little ones. Some people think these bugs are gross and they wanna know how to get rid of them. Honestly, they do not harm the plant. They are not really a problem in the garden. I leave them alone. Never ever spray pesticide on your milkweed plants. The purpose of these plants is to allow the monarch caterpillars to feed on the leaves. Most pesticides will kill almost all bugs. Likewise, household chemicals like salt, vinegar, soap sprays, that will kill monarch caterpillars. So, you know, learn how to deal with bugs you don't like. If they're not hurting your plant, not invading your house, not stinging you, just leave them alone. I'm sorry you don't like the milkweed bugs and you think they're ugly. If you really don't want these bugs in your yard, don't plant milkweed. If they are ruining your seed harvest, you can cover the seed pods with organza bags. Planting milkweed seeds. You can winter sow them in jugs. I have a video about that right here. You can winter sow them in place like in a vegetable bed. In the springtime, you can move them wherever you want. You can direct sow them in place where you want them to grow. This is probably the best method when you have enough seed. If you only have five seeds, you want to make sure every single plant grows. But if you have 100, 200, 500 seeds, you can kind of scatter them where you want them. You can also give away milkweed seeds to friends and neighbors. People love planting milkweeds because they love to have those visits by those monarch caterpillars. They love to see the monarchs. It's great for kids to be able to see the metamorphosis. It's such a great thing to share with your community. You can also scatter the seeds in weedy landscapes that are unmanaged. Power line cuts, alleyways, easements with unmowed ditches. Be creative. Never scatter seeds on someone else's property without permission. They might have animals or livestock that shouldn't be eating the plants. When? When do you sow milkweed seed? A great time to scatter the seeds is in the winter, right before a significant snow. The snow will cover them, prevent them from drying out or freezing too cold in negative temperatures. This will stratify them and allow them to germinate in the spring and summer. Do milkweed seeds need stratification? Yes, they do. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on what stratification is in this video, but basically the seeds need to experience winter-like conditions before sprouting. This can be outside on the ground, outside in a container, like with winter sowing, or in the refrigerator in a plastic bag with sand or vermiculite. People have told me that butterfly weed does not need stratification. I have found the few times that I've done this, I got better germination after putting the seeds in moist sand in the fridge for 30 days. My germination rates for butterfly weed are crazy high after doing that extra step, but it's possible that it only makes them sprout faster. Other considerations. Even though the plant has a poisonous sap, when it's small, the leaves are very tender and have very few defensive chemicals. This makes the little seedlings vulnerable to critters. You'll start to see your milkweed growing, you get really excited, and then all of a sudden you come outside and all the milkweed is gone. And that's because some critters gobbled them up. They basically basically see them as microgreens. When they're very small, they are very nutritious, and so critters will get them right away. A wire cage is often necessary around new seedlings, of any kind really, because mammals are looking for something to eat after the cold winter, and the new shoots are particularly delicious. Even milkweed. <laughs> Once your seedlings are large enough, they can be transplanted out in the garden. Common milkweed and swamp milkweed are very easy to transplant. Butterfly weed is a little more tricky. It might lose all its leaves after you transplant plant it. A lot of times they will bounce back in June or July. So try to be patient or direct sow them in the exact location you want them. So remember, collect
collect your milkweed seeds in August and September, sow them outside in winter, protect your young seedlings with a wire cage, and you will get hundreds of seedlings, hundreds of milkweed plants every single year for free. Native plants want to grow. They want to give everything they have, and you'll be rewarded by visits from so many butterflies. If you want to learn how to winter sow milkweed seeds, you can check out this video on winter sowing. And if you want to see the results, you can watch this video where I share my successes and failures. 